All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Christian Lind, and I'm the founder and CEO of MyCape. And I do have to say it's good to be back on those face-to-face -face events, and it's great to see like, how much more gets done. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good to be back face-to-face -face events. And uh, my goal here this afternoon is to tell you about Bikeip and what we have been doing in the bicycle parking infrastructure ecosystem and to show you different kinds of use cases that the smart infrastructure has been able to set up. But before I start a small disclaimer, we at Bikeip, we tremendously love cycling. So we are very biased on everything that we say. We love cycling that much that we have a bike to work program where you get paid five euros every time when you arrive to a work with a bicycle. We subsidize bicycle purchases for our employees and we have internal cycling challenges. So please understand I'm very biased on all of my opinions. But as with many of us here, we see that urban mobility is changing. The way we get around in the future cities will be completely different from the ways that we are traveling around the urban centers today. And if our vehicles change, then also the cities need to change. If you just think about the tremendous amount of infrastructure that we have built up for the cars, this is all ahead for the micromobility. And the great revolution of e-scooters has proven it very clearly that even if the vehicle itself is loved by the users, but the cities are not ready on the infrastructure side, there's going to be many, many problems. But that, that, it's not the problem of the vehicle, it's the problem of lacking the proper infrastructure and lacking the enablement. And this is exactly where we want to be with Pikeip. Uh, in between of the community and the city and in between of the micromobility operators and users. Today we are mostly focusing on the uh, personal uh, micromobility space and personal micromobility users because there's just tremendously so many more of those out there. So we position ourselves in the middle in order to make it happen because as I stated in the future cities, if the people are going to use more micromobility devices, cities do need to change, cities do need to have that infrastructure in place for enablement. So before we go into the use stories, quickly explaining to you all what we actually do in Bikeip. So basically there's two layers of services. One is the digital layer from where there's a user facing application, which we use basically in order to identify the user. Works as in any kind of mobile app. Uh, and this is the communication device with users. Uh, but mostly you interact with the infrastructure that is on the streets. So these are our bike stations, scooter stations, bike lockers, etc. What they do uh, is enable you as the user of the, uh, to very easily and securely lock your personal micromobility device. So basically when you arrive to a train station, library, cinema, cafeteria, wherever, you are able to scan a QR code on the bike keep uh, infrastructure and you're able to lock your device quickly and easily, whether it's an e-scooter or a bike. And if it's an electric bike, you can also charge it at the same time. And we also have an uh, operator-facing dashboard in order to enable for the cities, for the operators, to have the full control of the infrastructure, the insight of the usage and uh, you know, the levers that are necessary in order to you know, set up your own specific terms and conditions where you need. So basically, all of this, what we do, is you see in the green area are our smart features. We build different kinds of uh, hardware around it uh, to enable it for different kinds of micromobility vehicles and also enable our smart features for the third party providers so that everything that we are I'm telling about can be enabled for others as well. We, are, we have already implemented our infrastructure to more than 27 different countries, mostly Western global urban cities, uh, and this, this enables us to see and have a very holistic view of the micromobility in the, in the global ecosystem. And we are trusted by many, many no, known brands, and we've been building it since 2013, so doing it with uh, quite a long experience already. And our biggest network is established in Tallinn, Estonia. And a uh, few great things about the network in Tallinn. Uh, basically, it's a free of charge network across the city that uh, you as the cyclist can use 
any station. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just identify yourself through the Bikekeep mobile app and you are able to lock your bike easily and securely, lock your bike or e-scooter and charge it at the same time. An amazing fact about the, this big network is that more than 90% is funded through the private companies. Uh, and it's funded through the private companies because they all see a value. Everybody installs a specific station in front of their location, whether it is a cinema, it's an office building, it's a grocery store, shopping center, etc. But for the cyclist, it becomes one holistic network that they can use. Cyclists don't even understand which station belongs to whom, but everybody, as they want to be part of the network, want to have a station and therefore are ready to invest into it. So that's sort of one of the points of my presentation, that if the infrastructure is providing enough value, then obviously the developers are ready to invest into it. And this can be achieved easily with the bicycle parking infrastructure as well. So one of the use cases of this smart infrastructure comes from uh, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, where the local metro system, BART, had few issues with their bicycle parking. One was a tremendous amount of bike theft. Second was abandoned bikes. And third was that they didn't have any data about their uh, bike users. So thanks to the bike if stations, what we were enabled to offer to them, first of all, was solving the bike theft issue. Glad to report that there hasn't been any bikes stolen from the BART stations. When you arrive to a station, you're able to lock your bike with a huge steel bar uh, locking it from the two points. The seal bar is larger than any U-lock that you would bother to carry along with you, but even if somebody tries to tamper with the system, there is a loudspeaker alarm that goes off and the uh, distress signal will be forwarded to the local security card. So you know that somebody will react. And there's also a camera surveillance. So a great deterrent in, in, uh, in uh, potential cycle theft. So solve the bike theft issue. But what we also provided to them was the linking up with the transit card so that uh, the cyclists need to register. They register with the same card that they use in order to board the metro train. So this means that whenever you lock your bike, you scan the card on top of the bike hip dock and you're able to lock it. This is used as your identification device. Therefore, the metro system is now linking together who's actually cycling to the metro station and where are they boarding the metro trains and where are they going from there. So creating them this user journey where they were able to link together two different modes of transit. And another problem that uh, was uh, existing for BART was the uh, huge problem of abandoned bikes. Because before the bike keep system implementation, the way they were identifying abandoned bikes was they physically went to the stations and were look on a lookout which the bike looks abandoned. But that's really hard to do and the bicycle needs to be there for quite a long time. They wanted a quick turnaround in their bicycle infrastructure and thanks to the fact that we are registering all the sessions, we can basically give them a printout every day how long each specific bike has been there and who's the owner. Thanks to that, they can send a message, hey, your bike has been there for more than 48 hours, please remove it or we'll remove it for you. Creating all the sorts of interesting use cases there and legally, also, they have now a method how to notify you that your bike has been removed, which was an issue for them because it's your personal property that they're removing. Moving forward, a similar use case providing all the same mentioned values in New Zealand, uh, in the city of Christchurch. Uh, but an addition that we're providing there is also that all the bike docks are equipped with e-bike charging. So whenever you park and lock your e-bike, you also plug it in for charging at the same time. And another maybe great thing to mention about uh, New Zealand use case is that uh, not only that it's free of charge for the users, but it's also provided free of charge for the municipality. So the whole network of the bike keep stations is funded through the advertisement partnership so, so that the city of Christchurch doesn't pay anything for it, the users don't pay anything for it, and it's subsidized through the advertisement revenues there. Another use case coming from Reston uh, Town Center in Virginia, uh, close to Washington DC, basically where a local property developer, Boston Properties, uh, wasn't seeing like too much interest in, in uh, investing into the uh, cycling infrastructure, but what really caught their eye was the fact that they were able to brand it as a uh, tenant 
uh, additional program for the tenant programs. So basically, only the tenants were able to access the stations, and this was something basically that they were able to offer as an, an extra amenity. Uh, and from the same region, there was a, uh, or actually this comes from uh, Washington DC, where in the office of the mayor, uh, it's the office of mayor of Washington DC, there's always police cars around it. So the local cyclists figured it out that this is the safest place where to park their bike, because there's always police. And the issue was that they really didn't have any places where to park their own employees' bikes. So uh, they were happy that people are parking bikes, but something must be left for their own employees. So what we gave them was a bike station with the internal whitelisting. So whenever your phone number is in a list, you are able to access to a station. Whenever your phone number is not in a list, you cannot access the station, or basically it's not visible for you. And what we've been seeing is that car parking operators globally are seeing that there's a huge trend towards micromobility. And uh, as stated in the beginning of my presentation, they understand that they also need to make a change. So what you're seeing on the right-hand side there is coming from Reykjavik, where they're allocating the best car parking spots also in the office of the, of the mayor for now to the cyclist. But as mentioned, the car parking operators I mean, obviously, they are commercial companies, and they are looking for ways how to monetize from it. And uh, this particular use case is coming from Germany, Aachen, where uh, the local operator, APAC, has been setting up a charged program for bicycle parking. And what they are seeing is that the bikes are getting more and more expensive. An average e-bike is like five times uh, of the cost of the regular bike. Therefore, people are more worried about theft. Therefore, they are, the bikes are more prone for theft. It means that people are more willing to pay for a secure storage. So basically, what we are seeing is that the car parking operators are seeing the micro-mobility parking as a new avenue where they need to be in, because they are positioning ourselves, themselves not as car parking operators, but as mobility parking operators now. Not only APAC, but just recently, APCOA in, in UK also started establishing bike keeps in their urban mobility hubs, uh, making the expansion towards the micro mobility parking as well. Uh, this particular use case is coming from uh, Ulemiste City, which is the largest uh, smart city development in Northern Europe. And we're very glad to report that. Uh, thanks to implemented bike keep systems, they themselves are reporting that their bike usage has tripled. And their, e their problem in the first case was theft. But what they were also seeing is that since it's a sort of a higher end real estate development area, the uh, bikes that were parked there were mo also more expensive. And the, pretty quickly the thefts figured it out that this is a good region, this is where rich people come to work, this is where good bikes are which was obviously a tremendous problem for them, uh, but thanks to the bike keeps, like offered additional securities, we were able to solve that problem for, for them. But not only bikes. Where in 2019, when e-scooters suddenly hit the road, as stated in, also in the beginning of my presentation, the cities obviously weren't ready for them. On one side, we are not ready because we don't know whether the e-scooters should ride, ride on, the, uh, on the car lanes or on the pavements. Both seem wrong, but you have to choose one. But also, in what sense cities weren't ready, there was absolutely no parking provided for e-scooters. And this was particularly a problem for uh, private e-scooters. For example, when I wanted to go to a shopping center with my private e-scooter, the security guards stepped up and said, like, no, you're not able to come in here. Great, but where I'm going to park it, I don't know. Basically, shopping centers were kicking out their customers without any solution. So what we are providing there is a parking solution for e-scooters where you're able to leverage all the bike keep smart features, park your e-scooters the same way as using our docking stations and charge it at the same time. But not only uh, personal vehicles, but also the rental fleets can tremendously benefit from the docking systems, mainly from the charging, but from also due to the fact of uh, reduced vandalism when the vehicles are actually locked. And this is something that we are working on now. We have like some small scale pilots already running on the docked based rental systems, but uh, more further working on the concept for the uh, docked based rental fleet systems, 
where the stations are actually identifying the vehicles. Because what we are seeing is that rental fleet operators never want you to leave from their app ecosystem. You know, that makes sense. But our stations can report, or first of all, they can identify the vehicle that has been inserted and therefore can also report through the API back to your, uh, your servers that you know, this particular scooter has been inserted here, this particular scooter has initiated charging, etc. So you can leverage that and, uh, and end the rental session from, from your mobile app. So this is what we are working on providing to the, to the rental fleet operators. And what we are seeing on the bike locker market, uh, tremendous amount of bike lockers today are still operated with mechanical keys. And uh, most of the operators report that there's daily basis more than 80% of the vacancy. But since these are mechanical keys that they're handing out, there's no way to, to enable access more than one person to the one locker at the same time. And since the providing the access, you know, by uh, handing out mechanical keys is, is pretty a lot of hassle. You know, they're giving it out on an annual basis, so you end up getting an, an key for yourself when you only use it 20 times per year. Huge amounts of waste. Uh, and, but uh, adding sort of bike keep smart access systems to it, what we are able to provide to the bike lockers is the shared access to the same locker, meaning that, you know, when it's not in use, the first one who comes to the locker scans the QR code, can park their own bicycle into it, and therefore, you know, now it's reserved for yourself. Whenever you remove the bike, it's enabled for the next one. Tremendous amount of efficiency growth in the, in the bike locker space, thanks to the shared, use, shared usage. Same use case as mentioned before in, in REST and also for bike lockers where they need to provide the services for the more expensive bikes. But not only are we enabling it on our own infrastructure, but also basically existing uh, infrastructure providers uh, can leverage Bikeip smart IoT systems. This, come, this one is coming from Vancouver, Canada, where there's a provider who's been providing uh, bike lockers for like 20 years for the local metro system. We are giving them our IoT systems and turning their existing bike lockers into smart ones, meaning that users can interact with the bike lockers uh, with the Bikeip mobile app the same way as described. Whenever they arrive to the station, they just purchase a weekly or monthly pass uh, from the app. They don't have to sign up to anywhere else. Everything has done, uh, is, is done through the Bikeip mobile app. So basically, what we are demonstrating is whenever you have a regular bike locker, what we are able to add to that is Bikeip IoT, making it into a Bikeip smart locker or your own branded smart locker with, uh, with uh, app-based access and uh, operator-facing dashboard. So what we are doing with, in Bikeip is bringing together three sides. One is the ease of usage for the users. The user experience is exactly the same as when renting an e-scooter, just scan the QR code and done, you're identified, you have the access. But also providing control uh, for the cities and for the operators, because these cities need to be in control of their, of their space, of their infrastructure, and understand who are the users and need to have the communication channel with the users. Today, cities have no communication channel basically with private bike owners. And we are also obviously providing the physical products that you are installing on the streets that can actually make it happen. So when we're bringing all this together, we are able to like, give you a better user experience. So we're tremendously proud of the use cases that we've been able to create. One is me bragging on the stage here, but I encourage you to go to bikeit.com slash videos so you can see how the customers are speaking about the success cases, what they have achieved themselves. So. And if you want to hear more and in more detail, uh, come and visit us here in the exhibition. We are in booth E15, Bikeep. We'll be happy to tell you more in more detail. So with that, thank you. And do we have any time for the questions? Nope, unfortunately not. Happy to answer any questions at our booth or after the presentation here. Thank you very much.